Hey guys, um, so I thought I'd bring you outside today. I'm sorry that I'm talking so quietly, it's just that I'm only on the second floor of my building and people can hear me probably, so yeah. Um, so I mentioned a few times in videos that um, there were certain subjects I was hesitating bringing up because of who watches my videos. And I'm still not quite sure what to do about that, but I thought while I was still mulling that over that I would talk about why it's bothering me a little bit. Um, so when I first started making videos, I was obviously aware that putting stuff on YouTube meant it was accessible to everyone, including people that I know. And I was okay with that because I it wasn't really real, I guess. And the more time I've spent making videos um, and the more I've become aware that people I know watch them, the more uncomfortable I'm getting. And I've realized that it's not so much knowing that, you know, personal acquaintances watch them and are learning about these things, it's more so the, um, the unknown. Like, I'm not, it, it's more nerve-wracking to me knowing that there's people watching my videos that I know personally that I don't know about, like, that I don't know have seen them. And I think basically what it comes down to is a matter of respect. Like, yes, I'm making my thoughts and views and personal stories public by posting them on the internet, but I think it's a sign of respect for people that know me to at least let, at least tell me that you're watching them. Um, I found out that a friend and my aunt actually watch my videos, and I'm totally okay with it because, um, it's, it's stuff that I more or less would have talked to them about anyways. But for certain people that are in my life that I might not necessarily talk to you about transition stuff, um, it's only fair that I know I'm telling you these things, you know, if that makes any sense. So I guess this video is kind of like an open call to people that know me personally, that if you're watching my videos and I don't know, or you don't, you aren't sure, just tell me. I'm not going to be mad or anything because, I mean, you didn't know that's how I felt until right now. But if you've seen this and you know me, just let me know. Um, I don't think I'm going to censor what I say based on who watches my videos, but it's just, it's awkward wondering every time you talk to an acquaintance if they know something that you've talked about on the internet or not. So. Maybe that's just something I have to deal with. Um, maybe it's something that I could control a little bit. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about that. And there are certain things I want to talk to talk about, like um, tra like specifically trans related stuff, like pumping, for example, that I would not talk to any of my cis friends about. Um, and it's the type of thing that if a trans person gets asked about that, you know, more often than not, we're going to get really uncomfortable and it's a really inappropriate and invasive question. So when I talk about it on YouTube, it's, yeah, it's out there, but it's more for other trans guys. Um, and it's, it's kind of invasive for people that aren't part of that community to be watching it without my knowledge. I don't know if that's fair. I really, I'm not sure. That's why I'm struggling so much with this. Um, but I do want to talk about certain things, and I do want to talk about um, pumping and asshole on the floor. Just go by. Um, I do want to talk about pumping, and I do want to talk about sex drive, and I do want to talk about. Um, transition-y types of things. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess, let me know what you think. And if you do know me, just give me give me a heads up. I promise I won't be mad if you watch my videos. Um, yeah. I guess that's pretty much it. I'm, uh, like I've mentioned before, I have an appointment with my hematologist on Tuesday, and um, the closer it gets, the more nervous I'm getting, because, I mean, it really is... My, my surgery really does depend on that hematology appointment and what the doctor 
says. And one of the problems I've been having with, um, you know, finding out what happened two years ago is that none of the doctors really want to take responsibility for diagnosing me with anything or writing anything concrete down. And that's pretty much what McLean wanted, you know, like that's what he needs to be able to operate. So I'm really hoping that this blood specialist will confirm something one way or the other and actually be able to like, like write it in a report that I could give to McLean or that she'll maybe even talk to McLean about it. Um, because as much as I've been planning and expecting him to still say no, you know, and looking up other surgeons and trying to find out what, I, what I'll do when he does say no, I really... Uh, it would just not... I mean, the first time he said no, I broke down. If he says no again, I'm not really sure what's going to happen, so... I've, like I said, as much as I'm trying to plan for something else, I don't know what I'll do if he says no. So that's kind of stressing me out. Um, but you know, it's just a blood test. There's not much I can do to change the results, obviously. Um, so I'll just go in and hope for the best like I have been, I suppose. Um, yeah, so this video is getting kind of long. Um, I'll leave you guys and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. If you're in Canada, happy Thanksgiving. Um, it's almost Halloween. That's fun. <laughs> so I'll talk to you guys soon.